Well, today we're going to be talking about a decent edition of Monday Night Raw. Some people have called it the best episode of Monday Night Raw in 2021. You know, everybody has their opinion. I'm not... I'm not on that minority. I thought it was an okay to decent show at best. Definitely still some things I didn't care about. But again, you're talking about people who will look at one particular match, or maybe just two particular matches, and deem it as the best things on the show. But then again, you know, I guess I do the same thing with the women. But all I'm saying is... There are definitely some good parts, and obviously there are some negatives. We kick off the show with New Day's celebration, but that gets interrupted by the bloodline. Yes, Roman Reigns and the Usos appear on Raw this week, and we all know why, we all know why Vince McMahon had Roman Reigns appear on Raw. It starts at the letter R, ratings. He did it all for ratings. And in my personal opinion, Roman Reigns being there on Raw didn't change a thing. To me, him being there just didn't change a thing about Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw was still your typical Monday Night Raw. I'll say it once and I'll say it again and I don't care how many people want to argue with me about it. A superstar being on the show doesn't change anything. The only thing that changes things about about a show is the creative writing team. They're the only ones that can make a show better. Superstars don't make shows better. And I will always argue with that point, no matter how many times people try to push back against that. The Uso, the, the Bloodline would defeat the, would defeat the New Day, but not clean though, because Bobby Trashley would come out. And he would cause a massive distraction. He would he, he would cause a massive distraction in the New Day. And he would also spear Roman Reigns and Big, Big E. I've also got my cat here in my room, but you can't see her because she's on, on the floor. Following this, we had Eva Marie facing Dewdrop yet again for a third straight week. And the same result happens. Dewdrop beats Eva Marie, but the only difference here is that we have Eva Marie body shaming Piper Niven. <sighs> I am not a. F we are in 2021, and we've got superstars body shaming people. This is literally ridiculous. The last time we saw an angle like this was with Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. We don't. These types of storylines are so unnecessary. I know you want to garner heel heat for Eva Marie because, oh, she's the heel. But having someone being body shamed is not how you do it. You want to make Eva Marie an evil heel to make people hate her? Ba basically calling Piper Niven fat isn't exactly how to do it. There are so many ways to garner heel heat for Eva Marie. So many better ways to do it. But no, WWE chose the lamest way possible. Basic, just telling Eva Marie to call Piper Niven fat. Absolutely pathetic. Piper Niven did win though. And yes, I know her name is Dewdrop, but I don't like that name. But yeah. Piper did win though, so I guess that's the positive. As long as Piper Niven keeps winning, I guess that's the positive. But the body shaming wasn't necessary. Then we get to Randy Orton and AJ Styles, a very good matchup here. A very a very good matchup here. Um, Randy and AJ always have good chemistry. Randy Orton would win with an RKO to the phenomenal one. And in my honest opinion here, there you go, there, there she goes. Um, but in my honest opinion here, this should mean AJ Styles and Omos should not get a rematch for the Raw Tag Team titles. But knowing the WWE, they will still get a rematch regardless. So Randy Orton would win with an RKO to the Phenomenal One. 
Then we get to Shayna Baszler versus Nia Jax. This is the next match we're going to be talking about. The, the next match we're going to be talking about here. And it was a pretty bad match. I mean, there's no denying it was a bad match. You're in the ring. You've got two, two women who are not really all that great in the ring. Especially Nia Jax, who's been around since about 2015 at least, and is still not as good as, is, st is still not that great. She's been around for basically, you know, for 11 years now. Well, maybe not 11 years, that's not 11, but you know what I mean. She's been around for a long time, and she's still not that great in the ring. Shayna Baszler, I've never been a fan of her style. So, yeah, you would know that I don't like, e don't like either one of these women. But Shayna Baszler would win. She would choke out Nia Jax with the Karafuda. And she would also grab Nia's arm and pretty much kayfabe injure Nia Jax here by smashing her arm on the steel steps. And now I know some people are going to take this seriously and think Shayna legitimately injured Nia here. She didn't. It was a kayfabe injury. I think this is basically them writing Nia Jax off TV or possibly, you know, their way on, on confirming that Nia Jax is probably going to be moving over to SmackDown. Now, Nia, now I originally said Shayna Baszler to SmackDown in my predictions video, but I wouldn't be against Nia Jax moving either because she's been on Raw basically since the beginning in 2016. So I wouldn't be against Nia Jax moving either. Either one of them is fine by me. But I'll be more leaning towards Nia because she's been on Raw since the beginning. And now we move to the tag team tag team division for the men. We get Saudi Arabian bum Mansoor and Mustafa Ali taking on the new team of Angel Gaza and Humberto Carrillo. Wow, WWE actually made these two a team. I'm glad. I'm glad they did. Because I felt like Carrillo and Gaza would have fit fit like a glove together as a tag team and and Humberto Carrillo being presented as a heel here is a very is very interesting and I'm very much looking forward to see what they bring to the table Gaza and Carrillo would win this match a very good looking tag team finishing move a a last chancery or a mute lock whatever they call it into a drop kick by Angel Gaza a very good finisher I say so myself. And then we get women's tag team action as Natalia and Tamina defend their titles against Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash. Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley talked about Connor's cure at the start, which kind of ultimately kind of confirmed that there was going to be a title change. And that's exactly what happened. Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley became the new women's tag team champions with Nikki Ash pinning Natalia. And Nikki Ash is now the first ever three-time women's tag team champion. Congratulations to Nikki Ash for breaking that for being for breaking that record. Now I know what a lot of people are thinking, and I and I and now my bias towards Rhea Ripley because she's Australian is definitely going to hold me back here. But I will agree with most people. I will agree that I do feel bad for Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox. I do feel bad for them because they beat Natty and Tamina three times and they should have gotten the title match first. Yes, I agree. They definitely should have gotten the title match. But here's the thing. That's kind of on WWE because they barely put any time in with the women on SmackDown. So that's kind of their fault for not focusing a lot on the women's division on SmackDown. And yes, I know you could say, well, maybe Shotzi and Tegan could have appeared on Raw. That I highly doubt they would do. I don't know if they could do that, but I guess they could have. But, you know, I just don't really, just didn't feel like, you know, they would have, definitely would have done that. So I can definitely understand why people feel bad for Shotzi and, and Tegan. But I'm happy to see Rhea Ripley basically being the only Australian that is really finding a lot of success. Yes, I know the Iconics and Murphy and Bronson Reed all found success in WWE, but Rhea Ripley and Tony Storm, but Rhea Ripley is finding the most success out of them all. UK Women's Champion, Women's Champion in NXT, Royal Women's Champion, and Tag Team Champion. So I can't hold back my bias against Rhea, obviously, for being Australian, but... I do see people's point of view in feeling bad in Shotzi 
really bad for Shotzi and Tegan. Then we get to Charlotte Flair, pretty much absolutely carrying Alexa Bliss, as always, in the Alexa Bliss Playground segment. I'm not going to lie, it was okay. I did like some of the things they did here when they had Charlotte mention the old Alexa Bliss, saying that she wants the old Alexa Bliss, not this goofy, toy-loving little girl Alexa Bliss, which I will agree, Charlotte has a point there. I would rather the old Alexa Bliss over this current one. But then Alexa Bliss was mentioning, like, what would Charlotte be without a title? You know, Alexa, we already know what Charlotte would be without a title. But then Alexa says something completely stupid, which boggles my mind. She's been doing this for the past three years. She, this boggles my mind. She says, I don't need a title to be relevant, but yet here she is competing for one. I really hate when wrestlers say, oh, I don't need a title to be relevant. But, but, and they always say that when they're competing for one. I mean, if you never needed a title to be relevant, Alexa, then why the hell are you after the title? Because that's what she wanted, right? She wants the title. Am I correct? Well, then why say, I don't need a title to be relevant, if you're only going to end up challenging for that said title in the first place? I freaking hate when shit like that happens, when they have someone say they don't need a title to be relevant, but yet they are competing for one. It's it's just dumb. And I, and I hate, and you guys know how much I hate this character of Alexa Bliss. Every single feud that this woman has with this character is always about the doll. And Charlotte Flair is right about one thing. The dolls, that, 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 the doll that Alexa has is more popular than Alexa Bliss herself. And I find that really, really funny. I find that, and I find that really, really funny. People like the dolls more than Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss shockingly stood tall, which really raised my eyebrows, but I'm still not convinced at all. I still think Alexa Bliss will go over because it's in her hometown. We had more 24-7 garbage. I'm not going to acknowledge it because it doesn't deserve to be acknowledged. Then we get Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. If Jeff Hardy won, he'd be added to the US title picture. And of course, Jeff Hardy won. I am so sick and tired of people bitching and moaning about Jeff Hardy, about how he deserves better. And this, and this is the only reason why he's being booked in this situation. Because fans had a whinge about Jeff Hardy. And because now WWE are now elevating Jeff Hardy back up the card just to make people happy. Jeff Hardy is a freaking legend and a veteran of this business. He should not be competing for championships. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I'm, I'm sick and tired of this Jeff Hardy deserves better bullshit. This guy has been a legend of this business for years. And when I hear people say that Jeff Hardy deserves better, it rolls my eyes. Jeff Hardy doesn't deserve better better. He's already had a great career. This guy has already had a great career. What else does this guy deserve? Honestly, I'm over it. I'm over this Jeff Hardy deserves better bullshit. And then we get the main event. It was built up all night long. Bobby Lashley, Roman Reigns, and Big E in a triple threat. Now, there was a, now th these three had matches at live events. And Roman Reigns won them at live events, kind of the same way, spearing Bobby Lashley. And now this has kind of raised my eyebrows, because Alexa and Charlotte have been having live event matches, and they all ended by double countout. Is it theoretically possible that Charlotte Flair and Alexa Bliss ends via, dis via double countout at Extreme Rules? I hope not, because I don't want this feud to continue. Don't want that feud to continue. But it definitely made me think. So, made me think. But then again, live events don't matter. But Roman Reigns would win the triple threat, and he's a SmackDown guy. So basically, two Raw guys basically had to fall behind Roman Reigns, and that tells you how Vince McMahon feels about Raw right now. He would rather have Roman Reigns continue to look dominant, that not even the almighty Bobby Lashley and Big E can beat him. I mean, you could have had Big E win just pinning Bobby Lashley. You didn't have to have... I mean, Roman didn't have to win. But... he. But apparently he had to. 
But anyway, so yeah, Raw, Raw ended with a SmackDown guy standing tall. Thank you all so much for joining me for this Smack, for this Raw review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Raw was decent. I'm not saying the G word for it because it was nowhere near that. But thank you all so much for joining me. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. And I'll see you next time.